Hello, brothers and sisters. This is uh, Eternal is Torah back for a second episode. In this episode, we will be discussing who is Yahweh and why that is important to know. Um, any thoughts before we really jump into the lectures on faith, Ben? Well, the uh, just to tell you a little bit about the lectures on faith, these were lectures that were authored uh, primarily by Joseph Smith, but there were some other people who were involved. And um, it's a it's a compilation of of completely biblical teachings that uh, are related to how we develop faith in God. Um, and what we're going to be talking about tonight is why it's important to uh, to have that faith. So. In order to talk about this, we're going to be we're going to be uh, re basically we're going to be reading from the third lecture on faith, uh, starting in verse nineteen, because this is this is what we're talking about is why it is important that we understand the character and perfections of Yoha. You want me to go ahead and read, and you interrupt me and. Uh, if so uh, we or we can, I say we. Uh, I think we should probably alternate verses. Okay, that would mm -hmm. probably work better. So, um, an acquaintance with these attributes and the divine character is essentially necessary. This is verse nineteen of of um, the third lecture on faith. In order that the faith of any rational being can center on him for life and salvation, for if he did not, in the first instance, believe him to be God, that is, the creator and upholder of all things, he could not center his faith in him for life and salvation, for fear there should be a greater than he who would thwart all his plans, and he, like the gods of the heathen, would be unable to fulfill his promises. But seeing he is God over all, from everlasting to everlasting, the creator and upholder of all things, no such fear can exist in the minds of those who put their trust in him, so that in this respect, their faith can be without wavering. Man, it is so essential to have that trust, that that trust in uh, Yahweh, uh, to be able to have the faith necessary to repent, to come unto Yahweh, to follow in his path. Well, yeah, it's absolutely essential to know that he is God. Yeah. That he is the creator and upholder of all things. That there is none greater. For if you believe that there's greater than God, well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, you can believe what you like, but um, good luck with that. Absolutely. I'll pick us up in verse 20. But secondly, unless he was merciful and gracious, slow to anger, long-suffering, and full of goodness, these are attributes that Christ has. Um, such is the weakness of human nature, and so great the frailties and imperfections of men, that unless they believed that these excellencies existed in the divine character, the faith necessary to salvation could not exist. For doubt would take the place of faith, and those who know their weaknesses and liability to sin would be in constant doubt of salvation, if it were not for the idea which they have of the excellency of the character of God that he is slow to anger and long-suffering and of a forgiving disposition and does forgive iniquity, transgression, and sin. An idea of these facts does away doubt and makes faith exceedingly strong. Now, the, I, I think love... It's, I think that it's important to note that um, these... Um, these attributes, mercifully, merciful, gracious, slow to anger, long-suffering, and full of goodness, are those, those are actually available to everyone, but they're more specific, but they're, but they're poured out in greater measure upon his people. And how do we know that we're his people? Because we're keeping his ways. Um, so, 
the um, the point, but I do like how it points out here. We're weak. Yeah, we're weak. We struggle to um, we struggle to obey. But Yahweh forgives us if we repent. Yeah, it's just a simple matter of repenting and stopping. It's a simple matter of repenting and recommitting yourself in love to Yahweh, Yeshua, uh, so that they uh, so that they can remake. So that they can remake your character in their image. They don't provide. Um, if you don't wish to become as, if you don't wish to become like them, uh, eventually they're going to stop winking at your transgressions. Well. If you don't, uh, yeah. if you don't wish to become like God, eventually He's going to stop winking at your transgressions. But He is He is very slow to anger. He is long suffering, and of a forgiving disposition. It took Him two millennia to decide that the Canaanites were done. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and I'm grateful that you brought up the Canaanites, moreover the Amorites, uh, because when he gives the promise of the covenant to our father Abraham, which we will cover in a future um, in a future uh, post in a future video, um, the Amorites, at the point that he makes the covenant with Abraham, had not ripened in iniquity in full yet so in other words it remind when i read he, that uh closer to the bottom here that he is slow to anger and long suffering and of a forgiving disposition he was still holding out forgiveness or he was still trying to give forgiveness or the opportunity for forgiveness to the children of the Amorites, if they would but repent and stop their iniquity, transgression, and sin against his law. Now, I would like to point out that this iniquity, transgression, by enumer all he's doing by enumerating iniquity, transgression, and sin, he's not indicating in any way that the three are different. Right. He's just... He's reiterating it in every way that you can understand it, that God forgives. Yes. All right. Verse 21. Okay. So here, and so moving on to verse 21. Um, but it is equally as necessary that men should have the idea that he is a God who changes not in order to have faith in him, that he is a God who changes not in order to have faith in him, as it is to have the idea that he is gracious and long-suffering, for without the idea of unchangeableness in the character of deity, doubt would take the place of faith. But with the idea that he changes not, faith lays hold upon the excellencies in his character, with unshaken confidence, believing he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that his course is one eternal so, round. So basically... Like, so, for example, let's say we have a contract, that unshaking confidence, right? This idea of building on the idea of unshaking confidence uh, due to the fact that he changes not. Uh, if he changes, you can, there's no way that you can be confident in what he says his way is. Yes, you can receive revelation. But that's not the same as hitting your knees to receive your own personalized set of instructions and commandments. God already gave you instructions and commandments. That's why, uh, that is partly why he is the same. And I, I, I just want to add on top of that, because that was a, that was a very excellent point. But I want to add to that, that the commandments that he gives us 
are a revelation of his unchanging character, and therefore they will not change. Will there, uh, you know, can there be a change uh, if things are, if he adds, if he adds commandments as punishments, can he abolish, can he take away those added punishments? Absolutely. But the basic commandments, the basic laws do not change the punishments are, his punishments are not eternal but his laws and his character and his excellencies do not change and that is why he can say without any shadow of a doubt on his side that his course is truly one eternal round plus here's another thing about the unchanging nature of god since the law is a revelation of God's character and of God's mind and will, if the law, um, well, I mean, it's absolutely impossible for the law to change, but when you realize that his course is, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, with the law being the revelation of his character, that his course is one eternal round. There is no variance. There yeah. is no turning to the right or left. And you can have unshaken confidence. Now, if that law were to change, now he's an unjust God. Right. Because, or if he were to give personal laws for everyone, now he's a respecter of persons. So and we cannot but these have are things that we're gonna these are things that we're gonna talk about. These are um future characteristics. Videos. No, these are characteristics, characteristics we're gonna talk sorry. about later on. Yeah. Well, later on here. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but uh, I'm talking about we'll have more videos on the unchangeable character of God mm -hmm. as well. So here we go. Verse 22. And and again, the idea that he is a god of truth and cannot lie. <laughs> I hear uh, the book of Ether chapter, uh, I do believe it's chapter four with the brother of Jared on the mountain speaking with God and also Nephi and Alma, all of these people bear witness that God is a God of truth and cannot lie is equally as necessary to exercise faith in him as the idea of his unchangeableness. For without the idea that he was a God of truth and could not lie, the confidence necessary to be placed in his word in order to do the exercise of faith in him could not exist. But having the idea that he is not man, that he can lie, it gives power to the minds of men to exercise faith in him. So... If God makes a if God makes a covenant, this is the this is the real deal here. If God makes a covenant, He keeps it. Mm -hmm. Man may break the covenant, but God keeps His covenants, and therefore, Israel remains His people. Yeah, I mean, it, so for example, saying that if God was a man. We, all of us men, in this existence, we all lie. To one degree or another, we all lie. But he's not a man. He is God, and he is a God of truth, and he cannot lie. His promises are sure. But, you know, but the interesting thing is, is that this is where, this is, these characteristics are what we should be aiming for ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. That our character is not changeable in the wind. That our uh, that we do not lie. Mm -hmm. That we do not purposefully that, that we do not purposefully that we don't purposefully mislead people to yeah. their destruction. Right. That we do not uh, th th these are the kinds of things that we um now, the thing about God is that he can't even inadvertently do that. Yeah. He can't even do that by accident. 
that's something that um, that's something that no man can really say that they will not by accident say something false. Yeah. All right. Verse 23. But it is also necessary that men should have an idea that he is no respecter of persons, for with the idea of all the other excellencies in his character, this one wanting, men could not exercise faith in him, because if he were a respecter of persons, they could not tell what their privileges were, nor how far they were authorized to exercise faith in him, or whether they were authorized to do it at all, but all must be confusion." But no sooner are the minds of men made acquainted with the truth of this point, that he is no respecter of persons, than they see that they have authority by faith to lay hold on eternal life, the richest boon of heaven, because God is no respecter of persons, and that every man in every nation has an equal privilege. See, this is the point of no respecter of persons. This is why he doesn't make personal laws for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's the same for Israel as for the foreigner within her gates. Um, and this is also why, uh, this is also why he doesn't have a new law per covenant. Yeah. Because if he had a new law per covenant, he would also be a respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. So if he, just because he makes a new covenant doesn't mean the law of that covenant has changed. It's just a new covenant, and the covenants don't change either. The nature of the covenants don't change. What is required of us doesn't change. What he and what he gives doesn't change. If uh, uh, what he gives to those who meet the requirements doesn't change. Yeah. Um, now, This the the uh, the thing that we the thing the major pushback that some people will have against this idea is well he does favor those who are righteous but that's because they made righteous choices it's not because it, he looks at them and goes oh yeah you're nice no yeah exactly so this is what I would encourage I like you this to... one and I don't like that one Eter this is because that's actually getting into the idea of eternal election which by the way is would make god a respecter of persons and god is not a respecter of persons he says this multiple times in the bible right get that get a hold of that calvinists so uh, uh so what i would also say too is learn the law go to the the torah the first five books of moses the teachings of the prophets these, this is where the law is contained. If you want to know what your rights are and how you can have equal privilege before God, then take hold of his renewed, or sometimes in Scripture when they use the word new covenant, they actually mean, he actually means renewed. Right. You don't build a brand new house only to leave it. You don't fulfill a house only to live uh, only to leave it. It's the same concept. The, I, I believe the analogy is going for is you don't build your dream house right. just to desert it. Right. Um, and, and that's and that's that's exactly where I'm going with this. And you just, I. I offer this invitation to you guys to go ahead and start reading your the first the Torah, which is the first five books of Moses, plus the teachings of the prophets in your Old Testament. This is where you can find the law that God has in store for all men. And spe speaking specifically to restoration branch, uh, to the people in the restoration branches, the um, Doctrine and Covenants 59, verse 22, the Lord, uh, Yoppa, tells us very specifically what the commandments are that we are to keep if we are not to offend him. 
what he says is that this is according to the law and the prophets. And just because you don't understand the Hebrew idiom being used there doesn't mean that it's not in use there. And that means and that means when when Yopa says according to the law and the prophets, he's saying it's according to the Old Testament. Yeah. The law of the gospel is the same law that is revealed in the Old Testament. It didn't change with it it didn't change just because it didn't change because yeshua was crucified what changed because yeshua was crucified was that the punishments were paid and i am going to say this there's that part uh for if uh he was a respecter of persons at the end in the middle here but all must be confusion authorized to do it all or whether they were authorized to do it at all but all must be confusion the reason it's all going to be confusion or all must be confusion is because you are not centered in his rock which is his gospel uh, by the way i should just like to point out that the fact that all is confusion in the body of christ is the res is the result that christians teach that god and teach god who is a respecter of persons just like this uh, just like this lesson points out yes okay and lastly but not less important to the exercise of faith in god is the idea that he is love for with all the other excellencies in his character without this one to influence them they could not have such powerful dominion over the minds of men but when the idea is planted in the mind that he is love, who cannot see the just ground that men of every nation, kindred, and tongue have to exercise faith in God so as to obtain eternal life? And so this is this is going back to John. Uh, God is love. Um, wherefore, if you know God, love your fellow men. So this is so this is what we uh, so this is the this is the idea behind this is that um, now the thing is is God is love is, you know God is love is a wonderful principle but it's not the feel good principle that we make it so it's not he's not God and his love is not always going to um, is not always going to tell us things that we want to hear. For instance, I love my children, but if they're behaving like, uh, but if they're behaving poorly, I'm not going to tell them how wonderful they are. And so this is the thing that we, this is the thing that you have, this is the thing that you have to bear in mind about God is love. The other thing you have to bear in mind is the the uh, loving your neighbor doesn't mean accepting everything he does. Mm -hmm. If your neighbor is in sin and you do not warn him of his sin and of the potential consequences of it, you do not love your neighbor, you hate your neighbor because you're uh, ensuring that he goes to hell. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think a lot of people have the wrong idea about what love is and while love is wonderful and love is kind kindness isn't always niceness no all right you ready for 25 from the above description of the character of deity which is given him in the revelations to men there is a sure foundation for the exercise of faith in him among every people nation and kindred from age to age from generation to generation on men and on men amen now one thing that i do want to remind everyone of even with the idea of charity and our understanding especially in a restoration sense uh our understanding that charity is the pure love of christ as in we're to saying that it's the love that Christ has for us. Well, let me tell you something. Think about the phrase. It is the pure love of Christ. 
pure love. When you have a love of something, that means that you are exercising that that exercise that John wrote in John chapter 14, verse 15, which he said, if ye love me, Jesus said, or Yeshua, Jesus, Yeshua, um, said, if ye love me, keep my commandments. So if you have the pure love of Christ, you will keep his law, you will keep his commandments. And just something to add to that, the pure love of Christ, when you really love something, you seek to make it a part of yourself. Mm -hmm. And so those with the pure love of Christ will act in accordance with what God has revealed about his character. And God reveals his character to us in the form of commandments for us to write upon our hearts. And as we write these commandments upon our hearts, his character becomes our character. The uh, and there's it's this goes back to the salvation pattern, which is shown in Exodus. The first thing that happened. is that all of Israel was saved by the blood of the lamb. Yes. This is what happens for this is what happens for all Christians. They get they they're saved by the blood of the lamb. And the truth of the matter is most of them don't know where to turn after that. Because their teachers don't know how to teach them. Because their teachers have been purposefully misled to teach them things which are not true. Through their, seminar through their seminaries and institutes of religion. So, the uh, but the first step is being saved in the blood of the Lamb. Then he leads. Then he leads his people out, and they enter into the waters. They enter into the uh, Israel entered into the waters of the Red Sea, and his people enter into the waters of baptism. When they come out on the other side, the old man has died and the new man is born in Christ. Then, after the baptism of blood, after the after being born again of blood and of water, then they are born again of the Spirit. For the Israelites, this this and for the Israelites, this happened at Mount Sinai when the Spirit of God descended down upon the mountain. And spoke with them and wrote his Ten Commandments and tablets of stone. And what this and in the and in the new covenant, those commandments, those laws that were written in stone and on paper are supposed to be written in our hearts. The law hasn't changed, and the requirements haven't changed. We write them in our hearts so that we will keep them. We don't write the, is, uh, because clearly Israel was quite capable of breaking <laughs> all those commandments written on stone and every single one of those commandments written on paper. Yes. Because they did it time and, and time, time and, and time, time again. again. Yes. So the, the, this is, uh, we'll have, uh, there'll be another video on the, um, on the salvation pattern. Yeah. Revealed in Exodus. And last but not least, verse 26. Let us here observe that the foregoing is the character which is given of God in his revelations to the former to the former day saints. And it is also the character which is given of him in his revelations to the latter day saints. So the saints of former days and those of latter days are both alike in this respect. The Latter-day Saints, having as good grounds to exercise faith in God as the former-day saints had, because the same character is given of him to both. So, this is uh, something really important that actually happened in the last verse as well, 
but revelations in his revelations to the former day saints he's he's not talking about uh visitations to individuals no. he's talking about the scriptures yes so um this is what he's saying that the revelations to the former day saints uh, that his character is the same in the revelations to the former day saints as to the latter day saints um now there are a lot of christians who will want to say that they're no they're not no they're not you're lying guess what you just don't understand your scriptures and you need to uh, actually look at your scriptures um outside of the lens of your theology uh, because your theology is what keeps you from ever moving past the first step in the salvation pattern. Yeah. Now, I just want to go ahead and let you guys know also. And uh, we'll, we are going to go ahead and close this video out with our, uh, bearing our testimonies on, uh, on these uh, attributes and uh but I just want to let you know, we are going to be posting more videos more regularly. Um, but I just want to go ahead and say that I know that Yahweh is the same from former days as to the current days, the Latter-day Saints, the former day saints to the Latter-day Saints. There is no separation between them except for time. The revelations are the same. The commandments are the same. All commandments were given to the former day saints and the latter day saints. Then this gives us, I bear you my witness, this gives us what we need to be able to exercise the faith necessary to walk in the ways of Yahweh, who is God, and rely on the arm of Yeshua, who is our Redeemer, who are one and the same. Amen. And just one editory note. When we say Latter-day Saints, we're not referring to a religion. Because uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is just as wrong in their theology as mainstream Christianity is in its. The Latter-day Saints are those who are saints, i.e. keeping the law and being sanctified in the latter days, which we are now, which we are now in and coming up quickly into the last days. so i want to thank you guys for watching this video please remember to share like and if you have not subscribed yet go ahead and subscribe to our channel as i said we will be posting more video content um teaching and more teachings uh to help help you guys gain a stronger relationship with yahweh who is god um, and help you embrace the atonement um, and understand exactly what that means. Uh, we we love you. We love to serve. We love to be of service, and we love to teach. And we love God. Uh, we love Yahweh. We, we love, love His you. law, and we love you guys. Yes, and this is why we teach you these things, even if they're even if they're not comfortable to hear. We teach it because we love you guys, and we would love to see you. Be saints of the latter days. Yeah. So I just want to go ahead. Just remember to like, subscribe, and uh, we will see you guys on the next video.